Today I'm doing a video just for you guys. This is going to be a response video to answer all of the questions I've been getting on our channel about drywall and repairs and home maintenance. And I have a simple message to tell you. Don't worry about it. It's just drywall. So in today's video, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks I've learned from my vast years of working on the construction site. How to fix messes like this. Messes like this. Gaps and cracks, unevenness, holes, uh, oil paint transition when you put your drywall in backwards. How to cover up stucco ceilings and different kinds of scenarios where you've got texture on the roof. There is a lot of information out there that can be really simply applied to solve your problems. But if you're intimidated with touching your drywall, then you're going to be too creative and do something risky. For instance, if you want to know if you have a leaking plumbing valve, don't be afraid to open a huge hole in the back of the closet. Take a look. It's so easy to replace and repair drywall. We're going to show you all the steps today to take the fear out of being, opening up your walls and solving your problems. Number one, if you have a hole and you've got to repair it, the easiest way to do it without damaging your house, cutting your electrical circuits, cutting a hole in your plumbing, take your Olfen knife, okay, that you can get on Amazon. Just follow our link in the description. You set it to just a little bit more than half inch, okay? And you want to cut the hole wider than the damage because impact damage always is bigger on the back side of the drywall than the front. It's kind of like a hollow point bullet. Doesn't look too bad up front. <laughs> but it's not designed to make a big mess on the front, right? Here we go. All right. And you want to just run a couple of passes until you're all the way through. There we go. Piece of cake. Because once you've got a square hole, it's easy to patch. Now, if you've seen some of our other videos, you've probably seen this already. But this is such a great technique, it's worth revisiting. This is called the California patch. And what I'm doing is I'm just eyeballing to cut a piece of drywall a couple inches wider in both directions. So that'll cover my hole. Okay? What I'm going to do line it up, take my knife just inside the, the cut, and I'm going to score the brown paper from the back side, both sides. And then we're going to do the same here. And we're going to try to give ourselves a little bit of room to work with, because you only want to do this once. It's okay if it's a little smaller than the hole. Break it, and then hold the, and then peel it from the paper, leaving the paper on the front. This makes the perfect patch. One of the most amazing benefits is that the white paper on the front of the drywall is thinner than the drywall tape that you would buy to patch it with. So it actually creates a lot less work when you go to finish. You're going to take your drywall compound and you can buy this in a variety of different ways. If you're a homeowner and you're just doing one repair, you can get it in a little tub. If you're going to buy just a little bit, I would recommend buying the powder. Buy the 45 or the 90, mix it for yourself because then you'll always have it on hand. You get real good value. It's only 10 bucks for a huge bag. And the other stuff that you buy in the little tubs generally is really difficult to sand. It's going to drive you crazy. Now you take a little bit of mud and the idea here is to leave it on the inside of that framing of the cut. Okay. Doesn't work too well on the top ever, but here we go. Here we go. All right, and then all the way around. I'm going to take it and we're going to put a little bit on the inside edges of all of our patch as well. And we're just going to press it in. If you find it not going in all the way, maybe there's a little bit of restriction, just use your knife to level off the corners. And then press the tape in. You're just embedding the drywall tape and you want to do this just once, okay? If you work it too much, it's going to wrinkle because of the moisture and it'll cause you all kinds of pain. So get it in, wipe off the extra mud and walk away. After that's dry, you can come back and do another coat. 
and it should be done with a 4 by 10 knife like this. All right? And I know it's not dry yet, so bear with me. Okay, and use outward pressure on the top. Pull it nice and tight, and then come through the middle at the end. All right? If you let it dry between coats, sometimes the second application with this knife is all you're going to need. So you don't have to do it over and over and over again. You don't have to sand it between coats. Just let it set up. Less is more. Pull it tight and flat, and you'll be happy every single time. The second situation I see a lot of people commenting about is they need to check and do an inspection on their valve, or they want to change the valve from the backside. If you want to do an inspection anywhere in your house, Let's say there's shark bite valves and maybe you think might be dripping or something like that. You can buy one of these spring loaded trap door. Okay. They work great. And the idea is the hole that you have in the wall needs to be as big as this framework here, plus some distance for this to tie in and put some compression on. So what I generally try to do, this is an eight by eight, but I'll try to cut the hole so that it's about that big, nice and square. So here we go. I'm not, I'm not big enough here. And you can use a drywall saw for this, and you can cut the hole bigger than you need, okay? It only costs six bucks. And all we do to set this in is put pressure on the single tab first, because it will slide, and you push it over, and you rest this in, and it snaps back in place. Now, if this is down on the wall by the toilet, or if this is in the ceiling of your basement, or if this is in the closet on the back wall, nobody cares. You can put these in all day long. You can even paint them the same color as the wall or the ceiling. It's very standard. You can also use the same trap door in the ceiling in the basement for shut off valves and pipes and different situations and clean outs for your sink island, whatever have you. So don't be intimidated. If you need to have access to the area behind drywall, cut a hole, stick in a cover because it's that easy to take off. And it looks just pretty good. The next, the next trick I'm going to show you is actually, it answers a few different questions. Um, what do I do to fill big gaps? What about if I'm going from a new wall to an old wall and there's lots of damage or it's lath and plaster and there's lots of damage, okay? Or if the old wall is a different thickness, these situations are all taken care of if you own one of these guns. Having a foam gun gives you lots of control. I'm gonna just get this started here. Here we go. Turn the trigger really low and you can fill just about any gap or crack with exactly the amount of foam that you're gonna need. Now, if it's really nasty, you can overfill it. It doesn't matter. Because what this does, this sets up in about 15 or 20 minutes, okay? And you might find that this is a great alternative to using 45-minute drywall compound, all right? If you already have this tool, it's really handy. It does a great job, and it becomes the backing. Remember, we're just adding mud on the surface. This becomes the backing. It also is an adhesive between the different materials, so you don't get cracks. You don't need to apply any paper. <laughs> That's amazing. So one of the questions I get is a lot of people, they're first time renovators, they've done all the installation, they're down to their last piece of drywall, it's not quite big enough to fit. <laughs> or you've got a big gap in the ceiling because you're in an old house like mine and the ceiling has a bit of a bowl to it and you can't install everything square and level. So again, take out the foam, open it up pretty healthy, shoot it at the corner so it has something to hit and it'll expand in and out of that corner. And don't worry about how much of a mess it makes. Remember the goal here is that when that's done drying, it's expanded in behind, got solid so you can trim off the face and have a backing to do your taping. Now, we're gonna go up to the top of the ceiling where I did this yesterday and I'll show you how it looks. So the secret here is we're creating backing, right? So open up your blade, slide it up to about where you think the depth is, right? And a little sawing action. And then just gently trim it across there. Okay, and then you can clean it up nice and tight. All right, now I'm only gonna demonstrate just a little bit. Might as well go right into the corners. I 
actually do need this to be finished today. Okay, there we are. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Still looks pretty nasty, but it's ready to be worked with. So I'm just gonna tape out the joint here a little bit real quick. Now, when you've got a scenario like this, I've actually got about an inch gap from where the drywall finished to the ceiling, and the ceiling doesn't make it all the way into the corner. It's a nasty mess. And I made it a nasty mess on purpose to show you how easy it is to fix. Here we go. Run your mud off the side of this knife here. Now, this foam does not react to the compound. This isn't gonna melt it or affect it at all. Okay? Ah, gotta keep the dirt out of your mud. Now, I'm just gonna go what I call flat taping. Now, flat taping, flat taping is the process of just going on one surface and not going around the corner. And you can push that up as nice and tight as you want. Okay? And then we'll press it in. Now that we've got that pressed in, ah, you don't have to wait till tomorrow to come back to fix it. All right, here's one other trick. When you're taping with mud, you can do multiple layers of mud and paper. It's okay. You can sandwich it as long as you give it time to dry before you come back the next time to fiddle around with it, okay? Try to keep your mud in the middle of your hawk the whole time you're working. All right? Now, we're going to apply mud to the ceiling. Catch your drips. Try to work as clean as possible. Okay. Here we go. And then again, off the side of the knife, we're going to snow plow it right in there. Okay? Just pretend that that paper and mud there, it wasn't it there previously. And I'm gonna measure off a piece of tape. I'm gonna get a nice straight edge. Pre-fold it. Here we go. We have a nice flat surface up top, so I'm gonna use that to trust my line. Gentle pressure all the way across. Okay, cleaning the edge. One more pass. That's good. Now. Hold the knife flat against the wall. Because if you are being too loosey-goosey with it, you'll just push everything in and make a mess. There we go. Now, Max, zoom in there and tell me if that corner doesn't look perfect. Now, if you want to save even more time and you're comfortable with using your knife, you can go back over top and you can apply the inside corner with a four inch application right over that paper tape. All right, and then the next time you come back, all you'll need to do is a six inch knife just to make sure that it's perfectly smooth and feathered out. All right, done. It's not that tricky. Anybody can do this. The next issue you're gonna run into is I get questions like this all the time. Hey, I got a rusty nail or a rusty staple or residue from tape or oops, I was doing a weird angle and I installed the drywall backwards and I see the brown paper, can I tape over that? And the answer is yes, of course. But you have to prep it first. You need to use a primer. So here we go, I've got tape. Let's get this out of here, okay? Oh, the tape's gone, but I still got that red stuff left. I've got brown paper showing. I've got dark pencil. I don't care, even if it's marker. There is one solution for all your problems and if you're taping your house, you've got to have this can on you at all times. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Yeah, if you're a fan of the channel, you've seen me use it before. I put this on everything, okay? <laughs> Brown paper, no problem. Oil-based primer. Red tape, no problem. Oil-based primer. Marker, no problem. Oil-based primer with the pigment. Look at that, this is just disappearing. I'm doing an infomercial here. Oil-based primer works on everything. Let's say you have an old house with lath and plaster and oil paint. Kills. You can buy it in a can and roll it on the wall. They even have an odorless formula of an oil primer just for transitioning from oil to latex so that you don't have your paint peeling off over time. If you're ever stuck and you are in trouble and you don't know how to solve a problem, think oil-based primer and then all of your new muds and compounds will bond to it. 
If you use oil-based primer over plaster, new drywall compound will go bond to that. So you don't have to go to the, buy plaster and mix it up yourself. It saves a lot of time and money. This is Money in the Bank. And before anybody starts putting it in the comment section, no, Kills did not sponsor this video. <laughs> I just love the stuff. Okay, let's move on. I don't need the tape here anymore. Now we're gonna get away from the traditional drywall compound. We're gonna get into the quick set mud. And we're gonna show you everything that it can do. Here's another one of the most popular questions out there. Oh, I can't find Sheetrock 45 anywhere. What do I get? This is a CGC company. That means Canadian Gypsum Corporation. If you're from the United States, you're gonna find a USG, which is United States Gypsum, okay? They make a 45 mix as well. This is not proprietary technology. All right, it's really basic stuff. So 45 here is 45 there. It's the same stuff, just a different supplier. We have border issues, right? So can't we all just get along? All right. <laughs> and what we're gonna do with the powder, of course, and a lot of you might've seen this, all right? So we're gonna just do a quick short version of this. We're gonna make a little volcano on the hawk. And I don't know, sometimes it's easier to move the hawk than the knife, all right? Volcano time. There we go. The higher the walls, the easier it is to control everything. Okay, now I'm using hot water. If you want your 45 minute mud to set super fast so you can keep on working, use hot water, throw a little salt in it, right? This is a chemical reaction we're dealing with now. So basic science, grade eight, heat plus salt changes all of the chemical reactions and speeds things up. So we're gonna go add my hot water. Oh, making a mess. This is not the way the demonstration is supposed to work. Better close that up. Got to dam up the hole. All right, got it. To do, to do. Gonna sprinkle it in, of course, and try not to have another dam break on us. But it happens. Here we go. It doesn't have to go over the top. Sometimes it'll just start leaking from underneath. If you want to, you can go with a little bit less water until you know you've got it under control. But I found with this hot water, you've really just got to be able to move and manage the mess and it's worth paying for. Here we go, ready? Now we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. Making a mess, that's okay. Construction site, that's yeah, okay. We're not gonna worry about it because this reaction happens so fast that if I don't move and get it done, by the time I'm done fiddling around, it'll all be rock hard. Try to mix it somewhat smooth. This is a race against time. Here we go. And fill. It's already turning into a hard pace. Now, just for fun, we're gonna come back after this brief, brief word from our sponsor. We don't have a sponsor, that's what am I talking about? I'm just saying, oh, it's not yet. Yeah, I know, it's gonna happen that quick. Give it about 60 seconds. Okay, so now we're back, woohoo, we, uh, I've only been a couple minutes. And to be honest with you, it's not completely hard, but it is set up, okay? It's stiff enough that I can work with. And I'm just gonna cover this now with my regular compound. And it won't end up blending together and peeling out of the hole. And when this is dry, it's not gonna shrink or expand or do anything crazy like that on you. You can do all this at the same time, all right? Manage this mud, my goodness. It's a little loosey-goosey. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put paper tape majority on the old wall. All right. And I'm pressing it on the original hard surface and now I'm just gonna set it into the soft with a little bit of pressure and I'll watch the mud just rising away from the tape. And that's how I know that I've embedded it. If I don't have a ridge from the mud, I haven't embedded it and it will bubble. 
There we go. You remember earlier we talked about that we can use expansion foam and it bridges the gap and it seals it together so you don't need the paper tape. You should use the tape anyway. If you're using the 45, you have to use the tape. All right, again, we're just going to come down and set this up with a nice new layer of mud. And we're going to embed it on the surface here now. Nice force here on the original drywall. Okay, and what we're trying to do is eliminate the action of having too much mud stuck in behind the paper. We don't want to raise the surface off too much. Now we're going to just press those two pieces of paper together that are floating over that mud in the middle. Okay. Look at that. It used to be a nasty mess is now really well embedded together. And if you see any areas where the paper tape looks like it's coming apart, just get your knife in there, put a little mud, follow it up, make sure the surface is nice and wet so that it doesn't bubble. Okay. While you're working, you can always use the pail as a table. <laughs> okay, so we're getting close to the end of all of the questions. I've still got um, one, two, I got three more things to show you, but before I do, my floor is creaky. I've got to screw that down. <laughs> Let me just address this one issue. If you have dents, remember drywall is just dust compressed between papers. So if you have a dent, if it's dented on the surface, it's also dented on the backside. It doesn't get compressed, it gets moved. And that's fine because dents can be adjusted simply like that. Don't even think twice about them. Just fill them and go. Unless they're big enough that they've actually broken through the backside. My rule is this. If it's not bigger than one and a half inches, you're just not concerned about, all right? You don't need tape. You don't have to fuss with it. Just fill it and you'll be fine. Now getting back to this, all right? Once this is filled, you gotta treat this like a butt joint. You wanna fill this side. And then you want to fill this side. Okay. And by fill meaning pressure on the outside here and pressure on the outside here. Then you take a little bit of mud and you run it right down the middle with a fair amount of pressure. And here's the secret. Leave it be. Don't touch it again. Let that dry completely. What we've done now is we've set the depth of the wall to this point. This ridge simply means <laughs> that I have to fill a little bit here and a little bit here to get this nice and smooth. This ridge actually becomes your guideline. Now tomorrow when it's dry, I can come back and I can use my four inch knife, just scrape off that ridge, all right? And I'll start in the middle with a thin coat and I'll be using pressure going to the outside. <sighs> if you wanna know how to actually finish a butt joint properly, you can click the link to this video here. We've done some information on this series previously and it'll go through all of the how to fill corners and do all that sort of thing. When to use the 45 minute mud versus the other. It's a great video. I think you're going to like it. And one other thing I'm not going to cover today is nail pops. We've got a great video on nail pops. We call them nail pops if it's a nail or a screw. So don't get offended if you have one or the other. It's all the same business and it's all dealt with in the same manner. If it's a nail, hammer it in a little bit. If it's a screw, you screw it in a little bit. But follow all that information in the card up in the corner. Okay? Now, let's get on to the next two things that are going to be lifesavers on your job site. So, the next thing that people get intimidated about dealing with drywall is the mess. And rightly so, because drywall dust is actually lighter than air, it seems, right? It goes everywhere. There are two things you can do to manage your mess. Well, actually three. One, you can clean as you go. Resist the temptation to sweep unless you've bought this. This is what we call drywall sweeping compound, all right? And there are a couple of different companies that make this stuff. Um, one of them makes it green, one of them makes it red. I buy this stuff because it's available by my local Home Depot. And the truth is, is I've been shopping at Home Depot forever because where I grew up, we didn't have options. It was Home Depot or no depot. <laughs> so I'm just really used to their store and products. What you do is you just sprinkle it just like as if you're raking your grass, right? 
throw it up against the wall. And this stuff is formulated. It instantly bonds with that light drywall compound, okay? And it will bond to it, and then you can sweep so it doesn't go up in the air, all right? If I sweep compound regular, you see all the dust floating around, eh? Did you see that? If I sweep it with the red dust, you're not kicking anything up in the air, all right? That whole bag will last the entire job. So 15, 20 bucks, whatever it is, to not be kicking that dust up, brilliant invention. The other thing you can do is you can open your window and you can shove a fan in it. Okay? The best defense you have against dust in your house is putting a fan in your window like this. You can get these at Home Depot for 40 bucks and they blow a ton of air. That's what I do. Without a doubt, the most intimidating project in everybody's house is these stucco ceilings. Everybody's worried about, and we get comments every day, how do I deal with my stipple ceiling? What if I have asbestos? Should I remove it? Should I take it down? Should I go over top? Should I skim coat it? Dear Lord, no. <laughs> skim coating that ceiling will take you more time and energy and money than doing this. Take your piece of drywall, get yourself a lift or a couple friends, okay? Throw some mud on it. All right? Now the thicker the texture, the more mud you're gonna wanna have. I'm just doing a quick demonstration. So I think for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm gonna cut this down to size. You're gonna to wanna to use these to install. These are called drywall laminating screws. And it's just like it sounds. It's for sticking one sheet of drywall into another sheet of drywall when you have no idea where the framework is. Here's how it works. You take your sheet with your compound, okay? You stick it into your ceiling. Yeah, that easy. And you throw all these in, all right? Now these screws will not tighten up and be pretty, okay? What they will do is they'll hold that sheet in place until the drywall compound dries. Then the next day you come back, you guessed it, you remove the screws. Tape your joints, fill your little holes. You can put one of these screws every couple of feet. It's not necessary to put a ton of them in. Just make sure you're holding it in place till it's dry. And you can put a brand new ceiling over top of any textured ceiling in just a couple of hours. No mess, no worry about asbestos. Mwah, perfect every time. And if you wanna know how good that drywall mud holds, trust me when I say it's not going anywhere. It creates like a vacuum. So here is my secret for what to do with my mud at the end of the day. You've already mixed it in a pail, clean down the sides, okay? And if you like, you can even use a sponge. The closer you get to the bottom, the more you're gonna wanna have a sponge. Clean all the mud off, okay? Now, nothing's perfect in this world. This mud has been exposed to the air the whole time you're working and drying out. You're gonna put your hawk on top of it as a lid and it's gonna dry out a little bit more. So what you do, just put a layer of water on there. There's your lid, there's your tools, okay? And you're good to go the next day. Now the next day when you get here, you don't have crusty dry mud on the pail. So when you're taking your compound out, you're not gonna have those hard chunks in the mud, which will wreck your finish. This is how you protect it so it's silky smooth all the time. <laughs> silky smooth, like Zohan. <laughs> Now, one of the questions we get all the time is, should I buy the small tubs? No, always buy it by the big box or a big pail. It's not a lot of money, and if you don't use it all, it'll only last three or four weeks after you've opened it up and started using it, okay? It's not a big deal. You can make your own compound and put it in a pail and store it like this, and it'll last three weeks. Bottom line is, you wanna make sure that your mud is in perfect condition for doing the job. Now listen, guys, we've got other great drywall videos that'll help you with a lot of your other questions. We put a playlist together. You can click the link over here. And if you learned anything today, make sure you hit the like button, okay? Help support our channel by promoting our channel by hitting that button. We'd appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And if you're interested in what's in behind that plastic wall over there, then go into the video description, click the link for Reality Renovision. It's our other channel. You're gonna love it. It's got all the project videos that we're putting up from this farmhouse renovation. See you next time.